Welcome to the world of ants. On our recent hikes, we encountered a beautiful and sometimes controversial species quite common in Europe, Myrmica rubra, known as the European fire ant or the common red ant. On that note, let's get a quick overview. As usual, when observing them, the first question you should ask yourselves is, how can we tell they are Myrmica rubra? They are 4 to 5 mm in size and present with a yellow and brown color. The mix of these two colors give them a reddish look, which gave them their Latin name rubra, as that means red in Latin. In direct sunlight they seem golden and pretty translucent. In the shade they will look darker as if they were made of bronze, with grooves running from the head to the thorax. That gives them a certain tribal style, don't you think? On the head you will notice a triangle, some golden hair and a thin and long scape. The scape is the first section of the antenna. Their petiole, in other words the waist, is divided in two parts, but the last node looks like it's merged with the abdomen. The abdomen is covered with strong light hair, but if you look closer you'll realize that the hairs are actually covering the whole body. Lastly, their legs are lighter than the rest of their body. Oh, and by the way, be aware that this ant knows how to defend itself. She's got a stinger. As their name indicates, European fire ants are native to Europe and live in temperate climates. They have spread over Northern America, hijacking human trade routes. We were actually quite surprised to find them in the woods, because generally Myrmica rubra loves wet meadows and gardens in West European territories. They do occur in forests, yes, but that would be more common for Russian and Eastern European countries. They love to nest in humid soil, close to rivers or swamps, and they don't need high temperatures to complete their life cycle. That is how they are able to survive in a simple hole in the ground. Even more surprisingly, they know how to survive most short-term floods. All of these elements make them a likely invasive species as they can survive various conditions and quickly establish new colonies. The species is described as Uriopic, meaning that they are able to live in a wide range of environmental conditions. But let me tell you something, finding their nest is not easy. Myrmica rubra is a mobile species. They settle and resettle quickly if needed, which speaks to their survival skills. They are a polygynous and polydomous species. That means that Myrmica rubra ants have several dozen queens living inside one colony and they can have the nest be split over different locations. Their nests never go deeper than one meter on sandy soil. For regular soil, Myrmica rubra ants generally dig 20 centimeters below ground under moss, stone or leaves, creating a series of tiny chambers. Their life cycle is still being studied, so there's not much information available yet. If you have additional sources of information, please feel free to share with the community in the comments. For now, what you see is what you get. They have eggs, larvae and naked pupae. Like this one is doing it right now, they move the larvae quite often and bring them snacks. On today's wellness program, we have grooming by licking. Oh, and these ones brought them a part of the abdomen of an Akita domesticus, better known as the house cricket. The larvae are able to chew, contrary to the adult ants. This protein will help them to grow up fast. Here, the ants are laying with the larvae. Their motivation is not clear. Are they trying to warm up the brood or are they just resting? Ants can take breaks. They can even pause their metabolism in a way that is close to what we call sleeping. They do so about 16 minutes a day, divided into hundreds of small power naps from a few seconds to a minute. Let's come back to the nest that we found. It was settled a few meters away from a Formica rufa nest. Cohabitation seems possible between those two species at the moment, but as they are both aphid farmers, they might fight for control of the aphid cattle from time to time. Myrmica rubra collects honeydew that they share with their sisters thanks to, you guessed it, Trophallaxis, adding scavenged dead insects where they can find them. We discovered this nest in mid-August and as you can see here, the allied ants, male and female, are getting ready to fly. In Europe, the nuptial flights take place between August and September, depending on the heat and rainfall. They will hibernate from October to March at 5 to 8 degrees Celsius. In nature, when a rubra ant dies, her corpse is carried by her sisters. 
They pick a random site about 3 meters from the colony and drop the corpse there. Therefore, they do not create cemeteries or waste deposits like other species do. European fire ants have a terrible reputation because they sting and nest in human gardens. But like all ants, they are essential to the decomposition of organic matter and the regeneration of soils. So next time you see them, try to let them be. And as much as you might feel the urge, don't put your feet or fingers too close to them. Thank you for watching, subscribe to our channel to stay tuned and hit the bell to be sure not to miss our next films and let us know if you have any suggestions for future videos. If you have access to any documentation about Myrmica rubra reproduction cycle, especially the time before each phase, let us know in the comments and thanks again for coming along with us.